Have you recently made the switch from a Windows laptop to a MacBook? Well, if you have, one of the very first things on your to-do list was probably figuring out how to install Google Chrome. Trust me, I've been there too. I completely understand why you'd want to stick with what's familiar to you. It's human nature to gravitate towards what we know, especially when it comes to technology. We want a smooth transition with minimal learning curves. But hold on just a second. Before you go ahead and install Chrome, I have a special request for you. Take a moment and watch this video from start to finish. Today I'm going to be putting Safari and Chrome to the test to see which one is actually a better fit for your MacBook. Which browser reigns supreme? Is it Safari? Or is it Chrome? The battle of the browsers. To settle this debate once and for all, we need to have some kind of criteria in place. And in order to do that, I've devised four distinct categories that will put them to the ultimate test. The categories include compatibility, security, personalization, and performance. And some of these results might just shock you. When it comes to compatibility, Safari takes the crown with its unparalleled integration into the heart of Mac OS. As Apple's native browser, it effortlessly harmonizes with the operating system, delivering a seamless browsing experience. Picture this. The moment you launch Safari, you're greeted by Apple's start page, a gateway to the web, if you will. Unlike a conventional home page, this is where Safari truly shines. When plugged into the Apple ecosystem, Safari offers unique advantages that Chrome just can't compete with. Your start page is a completely customizable dashboard that can be tailored to fit your specific needs. You have full control to dictate what you see and what remains hidden by utilizing the hamburger menu located at the bottom right. By default, Safari grants you a carefully curated selection of features including your favorites, frequently visited, shared with you, and more. Your frequently visited section, a straightforward display of your most visited sites, is pretty self-explanatory. Google Chrome has something very similar on your homepage right below the search bar, and I will say that on Chrome this does look a lot cleaner and more organized. The one thing that I would mention here that's a Safari exclusive is that you'll get your frequently visited websites from across all your devices logged in with your Apple ID. Whether you're using Safari on your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac, this list will stay up to date with your most visited sites. And then we have the shared with you feature. This proves invaluable when your friends or loved ones share links with you through iMessage. Imagine those moments when you're too busy to open the link immediately, even with every intention to get back to it. But don't worry, Safari has your back by showcasing the first three shared links for your easy access. But I would note that this feature currently only works with iMessage and isn't compatible with other messaging platforms yet like Messenger or WhatsApp. One advantage that Chrome will probably always have over Safari is cross-platform compatibility. Unlike Safari, which is limited to the Apple network, Chrome allows you to effortlessly transition between devices. Imagine this scenario. You use your Mac for your personal tasks, but frequently switch to a Windows laptop provided by your employer. With Chrome, you can seamlessly pick up where you left off, accessing your favorites, search history, and more, regardless of the device that you're using. However, when we take a step back and consider the bigger picture, Safari proves to be the compatibility champion, especially if you're already plugged into the Apple ecosystem. Like when owning an iPhone, Safari offers more unique advantages that enhance your browsing. Now, while Chrome does allow you to save passwords, when utilizing autofill with Safari, you can simply place your finger on the Touch ID to log on if you have a compatible Mac or Magic Keyboard. Now let's take a look at both browsers and what kind of security they bring to your online presence. First, let's take a look at that last feature that we have on our start page, our privacy report. This is essentially serving as a guardian, showing you how many website trackers Safari has prevented from profiling you over the last week. You can also click this little button at the top to show you if the current website that you're on is contacting any trackers. Now, both browsers are very similar when it comes to the security protocols that they use, like sandboxing and HTTPS, prioritizing your safety while navigating the web. If you're an extension enthusiast and like to run a wide variety of different extensions, Chrome steals the spotlight. Safari, on the other hand, is much more limited. 
and takes a more cautious approach, but for good reason. Every extension undergoes a meticulous review and approval process by Apple, ensuring they meet stringent security standards. Something that has to be mentioned is that Chrome is developed by Google, a company that heavily relies on ad revenue. And in order to do that, Chrome tracks all of its users' data and search results to allow them to serve you relevant ads when you're browsing. But contrary to Chrome, Apple and Safari, on the other hand, are doing a lot in the background, ensuring your privacy and security is of the utmost importance. And for that reason, I'd have to say I'd probably give the nod to Safari here. On a quick side note though, we just had WWDC, and the public release of macOS Sonoma is on the horizon. And with the introduction of that release, we get a few new security updates coming to Safari including things like private browsing tabs that'll be locked behind a password or fingerprint ID. And if you're interested in diving deeper into those updates once they get released, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. When it comes to personalization, Chrome truly shines as a front runner. With a plethora of tools and options at your disposal, you can effortlessly mold the browser to align with your aesthetic preferences. On the other hand, Safari's personalization options are more limited in this aspect. And while it has its own strengths, Safari may leave you craving the extension possibility that Chrome effortlessly provides. Both Safari and Chrome offer options to customize your browser. In Safari, customizing the toolbar is a breeze. Simply go to View and select Customize Toolbar to rearrange and optimize it according to your preferences. Safari also has an upcoming feature that allows you to set different profiles. This is especially useful in shared Mac environments, where each family member can have their own separate space with personalized favorites, tabs, and browsing history. And with all that being said, in terms of personalization, I'd probably still have to say that Chrome is the winner. Sure, Safari has its own strengths, but at this point in time, the ability to truly customize Chrome with the assistance of the web store is really unparalleled. In terms of performance, I decided to look at a couple of different things. Memory load, energy efficiency, and responsiveness. Now starting with memory load, Safari really demonstrates its efficiency on Apple devices in this category. It places a lighter burden on your system's memory bandwidth compared to Chrome, saving over 100 megabytes. Even with the disparity in memory load, there isn't any real noticeable difference when quickly browsing even with a bunch of different apps running simultaneously. During my speed test for each one, I utilized Speedometer's browser bench to assess the performance of each browser. Chrome delivered an impressive bench score of 401, but not too surprisingly, Safari was able to top that with a score of 422. Now to confirm these results, I used Jetstream 2. Once again, giving us scores on how quickly each browser executes code and how smoothly they run. The results from Jetstream were a little bit more interesting. Safari scored a 247, while Chrome was just above that at 252. However, performance goes beyond just speed. A noteworthy aspect that I recently came across is that Chrome lacks the ability to play back true 4K content while streaming from platforms like YouTube or Netflix. And although the discrepancy might seem subtle when watching YouTube videos, it becomes more evident when enjoying Netflix shows or indulging in the latest blockbuster films. In the year 2023, where visual quality is paramount, settling for anything less than true 4K resolution is far from ideal. Both browsers showcase impressive performance capabilities, but what will ultimately tip the scales in favor of one? Well, let's shift our focus to an essential aspect, energy efficiency. During a brief sample size test, I diligently alternated between Chrome and Safari for approximately 20 minutes each. Now surprisingly, Chrome exhibited an energy impact on battery life while Safari hadn't registered. So then that got me really curious. So I utilized Safari for an additional 20 minutes and I was extremely surprised that it still hadn't registered any impact on battery consumption. So which browser should you go with? Who takes the crown in this comparison? In the end, it all comes down to your priorities and your personal preferences. Is it customization? Is it security? In my experience, when using Safari in conjunction with an M-series MacBook, it tends to outperform Chrome in most measurable categories. 
However, the differences between the two aren't going to be significant enough to notice in your day-to-day -day browsing. I at least hope I've given you a good starting point to figure out which one suits your needs best. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!